All right, so uh, one of my viewers asked me to do a video on using the Nano VNA to measure amplifiers. Mm, and that's a very broad subject, so I'm not really quite sure what he meant by it, but um, I think it's, it's a good video. Um, if not only just to warn you about certain things, I don't want you to blow up your VNA and I don't want you to blow up your amplifier. So, um, so what type of amplifiers are we talking about? Um, I wouldn't be comfortable using the Nano VNA on, um, uh, you know, a multi-watt amplifier. Uh, first of all, because <clears throat> the, um, the amplifier is going to output a lot of power and the Nano VNA is a lot like a spectrum analyzer in that you have to be very, very careful what you put into it. You'll, you'll, you'll destroy it. So you, you have to make sure you have the appropriate attenuation to go into your device. And we'll talk about that. But the other thing is that the drive capability of the Nano VNA is very small. Um, the Nano VNA um, H outputs maybe zero dBm at lower frequencies and less at higher frequencies. Um, there's really no specification on that and, and you really don't know what it is. It, uh, the Nano VNA is good for a relative measurement, not an absolute measurement. And uh, the, the previous version, the, the, the original version, put out about 10 dB lower than that. So it output about minus 10 dBm. Now I'm gonna use um, units of dBm. A dBm is a dB microwatt. So it is um, how many dBs away from one milliwatt are you? So if you're a zero dBm, you're at one milliwatt. If you're at plus 10 dBm, you're at 10 milliwatts. If you're at minus 10 dBm, you're at 0.1 milliwatts, okay? Now, the output of the Nano VNA H, which I have here, is a maximum of about zero dBm, okay? So that's as much as it will ever output. So if your amplifier that you're testing needs more drive than one milliwatt, well, you're out of luck. Um, and so this is not the instrument for you. Um, now, in keeping with that, most of the time when you're using the Nano VNA for through measurements, you're putting a filter in here or a crystal in here or some, something in here to measure its loss, putting coax in between, measuring loss or velocity factor or something. Um, you're always using the Nano VNA as the source. And so this port, channel one, is always protected because it will never see more than zero dBm. So this port was designed knowing that this side never got above zero dBm. So my rule of thumb is then that this side should never see more than zero dBm. Um, and so we'll, we'll make sure of that. So if we're gonna test amplifiers, we can test little amplifiers. Um, that's easy to do here. So there's these little boards you can get on eBay. You can get the 30 dBm boards. This is a 60 dBm board. Um, this is a prototype board. Uh, this is about a 15 uh, dB board. Um, and so we'll test, we'll test this board here. So why aren't I testing the 60 dB board? Well, a couple reasons. One is that um, it has a lot of gain. And so if you try to input zero dBm on this side, it won't work because this board, if you went from zero dBm and this multiplied it by 60 dBm, you'd be at plus 60 dBm. Well, this board's not capable of, capable of that. And this board's only capable of plus 10 dBm. So that means that if you were gonna drive it with a Nano VNA, you would have to put in some type of attenuation just to drive this board in the first place. Um, so you can do that. Um, and then you'd have this side, which has the capability of going to plus uh, 10 dBm. And if you got a glitch or short or something like that, if you had the potential of outputting plus 10 dBm, you could blow out the, your, your VNA. So I'm just not too comfortable measuring this one. Now this one is a 15 dB uh, amplifier. So 15 dB is, is a much better number. So if I, if I input zero dBm on this side, I'll get plus 15 dBm on this side. Um, still way too much for the, uh, for the Nano VNA. 
but I know that the input can um, can handle up to zero dBm um, or or close to it probably. Well, maybe not. You know, now that I think of it, it might be a little bit much even with this. We might be overdriving the front end just a little bit, uh, but I think that'll be all right for our demo here. But we probably want, would rather have a uh, uh, attenuation on the input as well. Okay, but I'm not too worried at plus 10, uh, plus 15 dB. I think we're going to be okay. But we do need a attenuation between this and this. Okay, I, I don't want this port to see more than zero dBm. So let's go ahead and put a um, an attenuator in there. So this is a uh, 20 dB attenuator, right? And so the very best this amplifier could give out would probably be, say, plus 10 dBm through a 20 dBm load would only be um, uh, minus 10 dBm on the output. So I think we're safe. All right, so I think this situation we're safe. So this is what we're going to test. So when we test it and we get a number, we have to remember that the amplifier is actually outputting 20 dB more than we're measuring. But we need this in the circuit while we're measuring, okay? All right, so let's turn on the uh, nano DNA. And uh, let me set up the camera so we can see the nano DNA better. Okay. Um, the first thing is I'm going to assume everyone knows how to calibrate and we're not going to calibrate at the DNA. We're going to calibrate out here. Um, I think I have a video on that when I measured the uh, loss of a coax. I show, a t I show calibration at the end of the two cables. I'm sure lots of other videos online that shows show you how to calibrate at the end of the cables. So I'm not going to cover that right now. All right. So we do need to get the VNA set up for um, the type of measurement that we want. And let me get the camera straight here. All right, so we are going to go to display, trace, and we're gonna turn off all traces. So, so now we have no traces. Now we want a through measurement, which is the channel one measurement. We're gonna be outputting from channel zero, measuring on channel one, and that's trace number one. Trace number one should say channel one log mag. So that's what we need, channel one log mag, okay? So let's check our calibration. I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to put a short. This comes with your, with your kit. I'm going to put a short. It comes with the uh, Nano VNA H kit. Uh, I'm going to put a short in here. And uh, you can see that we have a line here. And that line is, is exactly zero dB. Okay, so we've calibrated the machine and a through measurement gives you a straight line, zero dB loss. Okay, so no loss at all. It's perfectly calibrated. I'm sweeping from 100 hertz to 500 hertz. So that would cover a lot of uh, amateur hand bands and stuff. So, okay, so 100 to 500 hertz and we have a nice flat line. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, measure our attenuator. See if that's okay. A lot of times attenuators blow up. If put people put too much power in them and stuff, make sure your attenuator was good, okay? So let's go ahead and put that in the circuit. Um, so I'm, I'm putting on only the attenuator in, right? Nothing else, just the, just the attenuator. And if everything is perfect, we'll get a straight line, 20 dB below where we started. So 10, 20, 10 dB, 20 dB. So our attenuator is attenuating exactly 20 dB. That's good, right? So our attenuator is good. Our calibration is good. So let's go ahead and measure the uh, measure the amplifier. All right. So uh, amplifiers have an input and an output. So make sure that the attenuator is on the output. Okay. So I'm adding my attenuator to the output side, and I'm connecting that to channel one. Okay. So. Channel one gets connected to the output, goes in here. And then channel zero will go into the input. Okay. And we see nothing. It's way down here. It's way in the noise. And that's because there's no power applied to the amplifier. Okay. So this amplifier needs 12 volts. So let me connect 12 volts. One, two, three, 12 volts. And there we go. Now we get a straight line. And the straight line is measuring about minus 7 dB. Okay. Now, why is it measuring minus 7 dB? Well, it would be measuring zero if there was no loss. 
and um, we put in a 20 to be attenuator, so actually it will be measuring minus 20 with no loss, but then we've added gain. So whatever gain uh, that we have will be shown as a, as, a, um, as a subtraction, right? So we know that we would have minus 20 dB, but we have minus 6, which means that we have about 14 dB of gain, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, somewhere between 13 and 14 uh, dB of gain. So uh, this is all we have. We have the amplifier, we have the attenuator, um, and we made sure that the attenuator made sure that the input never went above zero. We, didn't, we don't want it to go above zero. That's a bad thing for the, for the DNA. And so the number that we get, minus 6.6, .6, we actually have to add 20 to that, right? And so we get about uh, 13 and a half um, dB of gain. All right, so I hope that helps. Uh, remember uh, to not exceed the input of 0 dBm, 1 milliwatt only, 1 milliwatt into channel 1, no more than that. The output's only going to be a maximum of 1 milliwatt, um, and so make sure your amplifier can use, uh, can handle 1 milliwatt of input, either as a high or a low. Make sure it's, it's happy with that. I think you're good to go. Uh, I should probably mention the um, uh, attenuators a little bit more. The attenuators aren't only how many dB of attenuation they can handle, but how many watts can they handle, right? So if this were a 100 watt amplifier and you were trying to attenuate it down to one milliwatt, your attenuator will have to handle 100 watts. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be dissipating almost all of that. It'll be killing most of the wattage and then only outputting one, one milliwatt at the very, very end. And so you have to have an attenuator that has a, a very good uh, heat sink. Um, so, so here's an attenuator that has end connectors on it, it, but it's got a big heat sink on it, right? Giant heat sink. And this one's only good for 30 watts, right? So this is a 3 dB attenuator. So this is only changing the power by a factor of two. So if you had a 100 watt amplifier, it would now be 50 watts on this end. 100 watts on this end, 50 watts on this end. But you could only put a maximum of 30 watts into here because it's attenuating 30 watts, right? Um, and uh, if it was 30 watts on this side and 30 watts on this side, then maybe you could have 60 watts coming in and then the 30 watts would be on the other side. But make sure you do the calculation right on how many, uh, how many watts your attenuator will handle. Now, this, these little bitty SMA um, attenuators, they're generally in the 1 watt to 2 watt range, um, so they can't handle very much. But we only have a maximum of, of uh, plus 10 dBm, which is 10 milliwatts. So nowhere in the watts range, we're still in the very, very low milliwatts range. So that's uh, okay here.